The Senate has voted to acquit former President Trump of inciting an insurrection on January 6th. The final Senate vote was 57 to 43 in favor of conviction, falling short of the two-thirds threshold needed for conviction. Seven Republican senators broke party lines in favor of voting for conviction, including Senators Burr and Collins. Soon after the trial, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said the former president bears responsibility for the deadly assault on the Capitol and that history will judge. The president of the United States summoned this mob, assembled this mob, and lit the flame of this attack. Everything that followed was his doing. None of this would have happened without the president. The president could have immediately and forcefully intervened to stop the violence. He did not. He wasn't furious or sad or shocked like virtually everyone else in America. He was reported by those around him as delighted. Rather than rush to our aid or demand his mob retreat, he watched the attack on TV and praised the mob to Leader McCarthy as more loyal to him more upset about the election. If we don't set this right and call it what it was, the highest of constitutional crimes by the President of the United States, the past will not be past. The past will become our future. The President was invited to testify. He declined. The President was invited to provide exculpatory evidence. He declined. You can't claim there's no due process when you won't participate in the process. President Trump's defense team responded, suggesting that they have not been given due process leading up to the closing arguments. They continued to claim that the former president could not be connected to the attack directly on the Capitol. They also claimed that protesters acted of their own accord and planned the attack well before Mr. Trump's speech on January 6th. The entire team condemned and have repeatedly condemned the violence and lawbreaking that occurred on January 6th in the strongest possible terms. We've advocated that everybody be found, punished to the maximum extent of the law. Yet the question before us is not whether there was a violent insurrection of the Capitol on that point, everyone agrees. No matter how much truly horrifying footage we see of the conduct of the rioters and how much emotion has been injected into this trial, that does not change the fact that Mr. Trump is innocent of the charges against him. Joining me now is former President Trump's attorney, Michael Vanderveen. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Let's get right into those words that we heard from Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He ended the trial with his passionate speech about President Trump's involvement in the insurrection. During it, he said that the former president is still liable for everything he did during his period in office. Are you expecting to face more charges against Mr. Trump in the near future, and do you anticipate being part of that defense? No, that's just political rhetoric, and I was hopeful that something would come out of this, that the political rhetoric would stop out of Washington, D.C., but I guess apparently it hasn't. Were you, though, surprised to hear those words coming from the leader of the Republican Party in the Senate? I'm not surprised to hear a politician say anything at all. No. Well, throughout... Throughout the trial, you denied that Mr. Trump had a role in inciting the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. You argued, first of all, that there was no insurrection. But during your closing arguments, you seemingly admitted that there was, in fact, an insurrection, using that word, saying that that, that was not up for debate. What role no, you, did the you, former you president you play? You didn't, you didn't understand the case. I used the word I'll give you the opportunity to clarify, my, sir. Sure. I uh, used the word insurrection in my closing argument when quoting the charging documents. Um, what happened at the Capitol on January 6th is absolutely horrific. But what happened at the Capitol during this trial was uh, not too far away from that. The prosecutors in this case doctored evidence. They did not investigate this case and when they had to come uh, to the court of the Senate, to put their case on, 
because they hadn't done any investigation, they doctored evidence. It was absolutely shocking, I think, uh, when, uh, when we discovered it and we were able to expose it and put it out. Uh, I think it turned a lot of senators. The American people should not be putting up with this. They need to look at who, uh, who these House managers were uh, and look to see whether these are the folks they want representing them. It was absolutely, it was shocking to me. Wouldn't have believed it. Uh Let's follow up with uh, with a point that you're making right now about the House managers, as you say, doctoring evidence and uh, and the argument. They didn't, de uh, they didn't to be deny clear for it. Our viewers, they didn't deny it. Uh, I put it in front of them three times. To be clear times. for our viewers, wh what you're what you're talking about now is is a check mark. Uh, that's a verification on Twitter that that did not exist on that particular tweet. Uh, a 2020 that should have actually read 2021, um, and the selective editing, you say, uh, of the tapes. Is that how, is wait, that wait, the doctor evidence wait, 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 of what you're speaking? Wait. That's not enough for you? That's not enough for you? No, I'm, I, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, sir, no, no. I'm trying. Listen, I, I am not a listen. juror in this trial. That's, what I'm trying to be all... clear for our viewers is what, you, actually, is what you're we, referring we found, to, because no, not no, everybody no. has found, been following. It's not okay no, not everybody, to doctor sir, a little bit of evidence. Respectfully. respectfully. I have not, not said it is. Question, I have not said it is okay. Ma'am, your question is I want turned. to be clear for our viewers. Listen, what I want to be clear for our viewers about what exactly you're saying when you say doctored evidence. The media has to start telling the right story in this country. The media is trying to divide this country. You are bloodthirsty for ratings. And as such, you're asking questions now that are already uh, uh, set up with a fact pattern. I can't believe you would ask me a question indicating that it's all right just to doctor a little bit of evidence. There's more stuff that we uncovered that they doctored, to be frank with you. And perhaps that will come out one day. But we won this case, and I'm not a sore loser, but what happened, or a sore winner, I should say, but what should happen is somebody should look at the conduct of these house managers. It, it, it's unconscionable, aside from all of the due process violations that my client had. And the media should be looking that at a square, straight way. A straight way. When I watch the news, I watch one station and it's raining. I watch another station at the same time and it's sunny. Your coverage is so slanted, it's got to stop. You guys have to stop and start reporting more like PBS does rather than uh, a, 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 a TV news show that doesn't have any journalistic integrity at all. What I'm telling you is that they doctored evidence. And I believe your question says, well, it's only a Twitter check and, a, and changing a year of a date here. They switched the date of a Twitter a year to try to connect it to this case. That's not a small thing, ma'am. The other thing they did is they put Sorry. a check mark on something to, to make it look like it was a validated account when it wasn't. And when they were caught, they didn't say anything about it. They didn't even try to come up with an excuse about it. And that's not the way our prosecutors or our government officials should be conducting themselves. And the media shouldn't be letting them get away with it either. I'm tired of the biased media on both sides, left and right. What this country wants, what this country needs, is this country to come together, to take the left and the right and find a middle ground and start responsibly being our public officials, our elected officials. And, the new, and the re, one of the reasons why they do it is because of the media, because the media wants to tell their narrative rather than just telling it like it is. And frankly, I'm tired of it. I'm not a media, I'm not in front of your cameras all the time. Uh, but what right. I've been subjected Sir, I, to I, I, this I last week. I understand, yeah. and I've given you, you the opportunity. You don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. Okay. I've given you the opportunity. I, I will remind you that what I said was that for our viewers who have not been following all of the hours of of this trial, mm -hmm. to be clear about what you what you are speaking about, and I understand I'm speaking that about you seem the house manager's upset. failure to prove their case. That's that, that's what I'm telling and you. They you weren't able to prove their the case. And you have won the acquittal 
you have won the acquittal of your client. Yes, and if I you'd did. like to continue to talk about this conversation, we can have that discussion. I don't need but, to. Uh, but for me to ask a question, a, 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 slant, a, a slanted question, viewers, a slanted question that was set up question. to say it's okay for them to cheat. That was your question. Isn't it okay for that. them to cheat? I didn't it's say just that. a little bit. You no. said, to be fair, it was it's only fine. a check on the Twitter. Not... That's what you said. You got to live by your words. I, uh, I... That's the problem. The media has to start living by the truth and not try All to right. create a narrative. Michael Vanderveen. Yeah. Thank you for Citizen. joining us. I, I do appreciate. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I see you taking off your microphone now. That was President Trump's defense attorney, Michael Vanderveen.